that was a short <laughs> stuff too. Let's, let's get this started out of uh, uh, reference for your guys' time that you spent getting here and trying to let you guys get back to whatever it is you want to do. So my name is Brian Lynchu, and myself and Andy Bennett are some of the co-founders and co-leaders of the initiative along with Brian Otto, the State Libraries. So Emily's new and uh, joining the Smith Advancement Edition Scholarship. So I'm excited to have her assisting us as well. So welcome to our information session. Hopefully some of you heard that the initiative is kind of the cause for calling for case phase and textbooks 2.0 is kind of the brand that they're pushing forward on this on. And so information sessions are meant to be somewhat informal. We we'll provide a little bit of information about what the initiative is and what we do. But then most of the time we want to spend engaging with who's here on what, what it is. So before we do that, can we go ahead and finish the introductions before we talk too much? Oh, yeah, uh, Taylor. I'm in Psych Sciences. I'm a GTA teaching right now. So. Okay. Yeah. David Thompson. I'm in School of Family Studies, but I'm also direct conflict resolution program. Colby Moorberg, I'm uh, a assistant professor in Rami. One of our speakers later in the event that we have to bring. Rami Barry, Division of Biology, senior instructor. Also a speaker. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, Joyce, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. <clears throat> I'm Joyce Baptist from the Couple and Family Therapy Program and Family, um, what, what are we, FSHS now. And I'll be teaching under, an undergraduate class for the first time. Um, this coming fall, so I'm very okay. interested in trying to figure this out. Okay. And Tucker. Yeah. Uh, I'm Tucker Jones. I'm the coordinator of the Teaching and Writing Center, and so I'm helping to facilitate the session make sure that it works. <laughs> we appreciate the coordination that we, you know, the have the Teaching and Writing Center for the events today as well. Do you want me to talk about the issue? Do you want to shout at it or? Okay, so, okay, I have the I have the website up here, and so hopefully you can see that on the screen. Uh, we have a lot of information about the initiative up here. Everything from, you can see we have past grant recipients here that you can go see people like Colby, Robbie, people that have received all the awards. So you can go down the drop down and see who, who people have received awards with. Uh, a lot of those individuals are people that are good resources to understand kind of what they've done. Uh, but you can see that we call it the, we talk a lot about resources and things because we are not necessarily focused on that you have to place a textbook with a textbook. We are open to what ideas that you have and how you feel like you can best uh, provide the resources that your students need to learn rather than um, create a textbook. So we have everything from like Teresa Hartman at Key State Slide, who teaches college algebra, who said that Andy talked about math students reading the book, you know, of course, class before we start a session saying that. You know, fast students don't like to read the text, don't like read the text anyway. College, um, college I, yeah, yeah, college I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want to go too far. I uh, don't, don't, want, to, don't want to read uh, the, the textbook anyway. And so she made kind of Khan Academy videos for working sample problems. And so that's primarily what she has set up. And then she made problem sets that match up with that to help teach her students uh, college algebra. And so we're open to uh, ideas on how, how we might want to do that. Uh, everything from uh, Robbie will talk about how he adapted the resource. And so there are a number of like open textbook or open educational resources out there available in some fields. You know, I guess that's what I should, you know, add a caveat on. And so you could take those and adapt those in some cases using some platforms that we have available now or are going to have available to do. And, uh, or you can have things like, uh, Colby, you want to talk about your anthology you've done real quick, I guess, and things, which is kind of another spin on uh, how somebody can make a resource. Yeah, so uh, in agriculture, there's a lot of uh, short PDFs uh, that are called extension bulletins. So some are produced by uh, extension faculty at Miami universities. Some are produced by, uh, by like technical agencies with the government, with the federal government. And so I, I, made, I made an animated bibliography that collects all those, puts them into a chapter format, or chapters and sections, and then add annotations to give context to each one. Which is very innovative, because he took something that is 
copyrighted in theory is that he can't pull it himself, but he made like, you know, he put the link there and then put his text to it and then he's able to kind of cobble together something that kind of fits, you know, the needs of the students. And so we have had students do, or we have had faculty do something like alternative resources where maybe they, they do something similar to that on campus, but this is Colby's way of doing this and making it open is something that was very innovative and kind of, kind of designed doing that. So as far as what we can do, we, we provide awards to support faculty in the time and effort it takes to make this change. And so anywhere from $2,000 to $5,000 is what we traditionally will support. The amount that we give is sometimes based off of the, the amount of um, work that it might take and then also the return on investment that goes back to students and the awards that we're making. And so that's something that we consider with the all-in that's going on now, if we have courses that maybe have merit, we will consider up to $10,000. And we are also with all-in, something that's a little bit more unique is we're having two uh, review periods. And so we are going to have a review period right before all-in. And so winners will be announced possibly at all-in day, something along the lines of Robbie, <laughs> so Robbie, 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 Robbie just got one. So I'll say, I'll say Robbie's example. So Robbie, you know, Robbie Bear, if, if you, with your support, Robbie Bear will change Biology 101 from, you know, textbook to an open educational resource. It's going to affect 500 students, save them $200 a student for a full savings of this. You know what I mean? It's the sort of thing that we have a vision for rolling out on the all-in day. And so those applications are, do the 23rd at noon. Does that sound correct to you guys? Okay. And so that way we have a little bit of time to prepare for that and um, are able to provide that support. 23rd of March. Yes. Right. And then all in days, 25th of March. So he says we'll have a little time to prepare. For that. <laughs> <laughs> we, we're working on pre pipe at, at the same right. time. All in day is a big thing at Foundation. It means all the donors to the university are going to get emails and tweets and various things. Mm -hmm. So this is a way to uh, bring attention to your program. To say, hey, our program is helping students, which is a good message for your donors. And I, I think it will be engaging students as well. And so I think it's another good way to try to make sure students understand some of the things and programs we have as well. That might be involved in this. So we, we have, information on the website that kind of talks about the past works of it. Just that we have resources on where you might be able to find. If you are looking for something in specific, as far as what might be available from a open textbook, open educational resource standpoint, we often recommend that you reach out to us because it is kind of a, a vast, vast wilderness, you know what I mean, I guess, of <laughs> resources. <laughs> Uh, I, I guess I want to say negative, but there's there's a lot. You know what I mean? If you go into some of the repositories and things that are available to have these, there's a lot of information in them, and sometimes it's hard to necessarily navigate. And so we don't want to have people go in and get turned off by the amount of results to come back when they're looking at conflict resolution or whatever that specific discipline might be. It helps to have professional librarians. <laughs> <laughs> So the other thing to know about this that is beneficial is um, we also have a fee that goes along with the initiatives. So we have a ten dollar per course fee, nine dollars of that goes back to your department, and so it is a way also to bring resources back in to help support the, the department and its work in supporting the course and making this change and then continuing to teach with that that resource going forward. A dollar of that comes back to the initiative, and we provide that out in the grants that I'm talking about. Now, we don't have nearly enough students to be able to uh, have enough funding that comes directly just from that one dollar, and so the foundation's been a big partner in helping us continue to uh, be able to support faculty in making this change. So, grant application requirements, if I go right here on the website, it opens. CC, it talks about we want to have instructor information, some course information. We want some information about what you use currently. So David talked about these ask students and pulled them. You know what I mean? I guess some. And so you would say, this is what I use now. This is the cost. This is how many students I typically have. This is how much I anticipate them saving. You know what I mean? If I move away from it, that type of information. The amount of funding is requested. 
and then your plan for your open alternative textbook. And so everything from how do you plan to replace it, e.g. with an existing textbook, adopt, adapt, do you want to have you obtained uh, permission if that's applicable to what you're doing? And so that means that gets into copyright. So that's where Brian and Emily can provide some expertise and things if you have questions specifically on that. What format will be used? Um, so we have some platforms that we're making available now that are making this a uh, little bit more sophisticated discussion than what it's been in the past. Like Colby's going to talk about Pressbooks a little bit later today, which is a nice like book offering platform where you can kind of edit in a uh, background that's kind of like WordPress, I guess I'd say, and make kind of a professional uh, input. If you want to. One, one thing about some of these, uh, have you obtained copyright? That's not going to harm you if the answer is no. Or you know, we will ask things about what have you done to be sure your book is accessible for ADA compliance. But we have a copyright library. Uh, the Student Access Center sends over somebody to help work with us on accessibility. We understand that no, you probably don't have all that in place right now. You're, you're getting started on this. It's more a sense of, okay, we want to be sure you think about, oh, I'm going to need to do this. And that we know, hey, we should you know, have Emily talk to you about, okay, how can I get copyright for this what's involved? What do I need copyright for? What can I use with fair use? Or, hey, I have to make things available. A lot of people put it in say, I'm going to do a PDF. A PDF can be accessible, but it frequently is not. And how you put it together matters. So saying, okay, before you get too deep into this, let's have you talk to someone to say, okay, to be an ABA, you're going to have to do the following when you put this together. So don't get frightened and say, oh, this says I need this or I need that. It's more, this is saying, have you thought about, will you need this? We can help you in whatever you need. And Andy's, Andy's point there is very valid in that this isn't meant to be uh, we are the gatekeepers to funding. We want to work with you guys if you're interested in doing this and developing and creating something. And so that's part of what we view as our role within the initiative as well. So uh, I don't know if Ryan or Colby wants to talk about, you know, the press books, I guess, is his, his resource or how it works maybe as a platform. <laughs> you're not pulling it up there. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, so press books, they, they start with a landing page, and then you, if you scroll down, you have to see the outline for uh, for all the chapters. And uh, they have it split into different sections, and if you want to go into one of those... You know, let's just go to read book and go from there. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah. There we go. All right, so, yeah, so right now there's actually an open peer review. Uh, so what, what I mean by that is uh, anyone can go in and actually use hypothesis to make a comment on any, any page of the book. And so, so it is a, a peer reviewed resource. And there's other ways they make comments on it too. Uh, but I made that the landing page for now. And then I think uh, the 8th, March 8th, is what I said is like the end of the peer review period. Uh, but if you want to go up to the, the menu on the left, uh, so they, you can navigate in the web book to any other uh, chapter that holds it forward. Uh, so all this, it, it combined, it's, it, it's, it's not only authoring, but it, it completes the full package. So there is going to be copyright information attached to this, whatever licensing, uh, any additional comments, authors, kind of like full, full bios if you, if you wanted to go that route. So there, uh, we don't have our remote, one of our recent books up here, but it's uh, counter and man aerial systems in the cyber domain, something like that. And, yeah. And it's pretty, it, it has some pretty awesome options. And output as right. so. Yeah, so once so it's built in Pressbooks, uh, it, it automatically creates the webbook. Like I said, it's kind of what you like look at while you're building it up. Uh, but once it's built, uh, then the Pressbook document can be exported as a, an EPUB or other EPUB formats. Uh, it can also be exported as a, a PDF that's optimized for, uh, for print or for web. And uh, once it is one of the format, you know, there's a whole bunch of and, Yeah. But so the, if that is complicated, basically it's, it's allowing you, if you 
build in a platform like this is allowing your student to kind of choose, you know, hey, I, I use Kindle. You know what I mean? I'm going to pull it into my Kindle. You know what I mean? And I'm going to work with it that way. And so the web book is adaptable to screen size, so they can read it from a cell phone really easily. So that's pretty handy. And so yeah, very cool, you know what I mean, sort of platform versus when we started the initiative when we were talking about like Word documents and you know mm -hmm. building out PDFs and things. And so it's definitely yes. like another, you know, evolution and things and having yeah. this this type of platform available. And one more thing that's possible too is to get print on demand. Mm -hmm. So if your students really want a hard copy of a textbook, then there's ways to set it up where they can just order a hard copy from Amazon mm -hmm. uh, or some other print on demand services. Wow. Yeah, man. Go ahead. That looks like a tremendous amount of work. How long would it take you? And I realize everybody works at a different rate, and if you're uh, confused about it, it's one thing. But. Well, so most of the chapters, I actually collaborated with my students to actually make the chapters. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit later, a little later too. Uh, but we had 25 other contributors that helped that helped build this uh, this book. Uh, so it was. It was a team effort, and it was, it was a lot of work on my part. But, so, uh, but, but I, it, it, part, part of it is I let the project kind of balloon into much something much bigger than what I actually intended. <laughs> what, I, what I really wanted is like one reading assignment per class period. So it's like for that class, like 30 class periods, basically. And, and there's, in the end, we ended up having over like 700 cited resources in it. Because <laughs> I wanted it to be like a, a, a much broader, uh, thing uh, just to make it more usable for other audiences. So and so uh, it uh, does take a it takes a lot of time if you write one yourself. It's less time if you adapt one. You know what I mean. And so that helps save some time. Uh, I it's pretty forthright. And I I have one of these. You know I guess a maybe long time ago and it took me hundreds of hours to do that. But there's also some things available now that were not available. You know when I did do that. Things are like platform wise and you know those types of things. And so from that perspective, there's some advantages and things. And another thing to keep in mind that we often talk to people about is uh, Kobe has a full book now. Did you did you use it in pieces before you combined it together or yeah, so I kind of had like a bare minimum yeah. uh, version of that I, that I used uh, basically through Canvas uh -huh. uh, for, for the last two offerings that I've had. Right. And uh, in this last semester, I was building it out into uh, press books, like as we were going through mm -hmm. uh, throughout the semester. Right. So, uh, yeah, it doesn't have to be in, in a complete, finished, polished form so, so uh, before I start using it. My, my, my point is oftentimes when we work with people and doing this, the first time you use it, you might be, so you should have everything done in drafts before like the semester starts, but you might be finalizing and rolling out, you know, as you're going through your semester and things, and then you get feedback, you know, kind of Colby talked about, then you really, you know, take some more time and you call us together and then that's when you start putting together, now I have a resource, you know what I mean, and things versus a little bit pieces, I guess. You've actually done a draft before the semester. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell people that I did, I did not do that. I will, I, will, I will admit I did not do that for when I did my book like a decade ago. And then about, uh, you know, I think like late April, you know, I guess, was when I hit that I was hitting sections that I did not have drafts done for, and that was very stressful. You know what I mean? To be creating those at the same time I was trying to teach the course. And so I try to tell people, try to have drafts <laughs> really being done, and then you could be working on finalizing while you're preparing for that class. And things. And he's right, you know, to some extent, I try to tell them that this is what my experience was, and I've heard from other people that we worked with. You know what I mean? That this is something that ideally you kind of want to work towards towards a goal. You know what I mean? You said we want to have something. I, I would typically a week or two ahead. Yeah. But, 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 you know, I'd be working on what I'm doing right. last week of March. Right. <laughs> Maybe I might be. So, you know, I guess for break, I can. Yeah. Everybody's a different writer. You know what I mean? I guess and content creator too. Yeah. I just know that it takes quite a bit of time. You know what I mean? The the create the content. I guess I think sometimes as you're also preparing for the class and dealing with assessments that you're grading or whatever the things that you're having to you know, manage as well while you're teaching. And so that's something that. Try to keep in mind as well. 
So did you want to show? Did, yeah, well, I just wanted to go ahead and show. So we uh, focused on Kobe's book, and this this is Brian's. And so Brian created something that's 594 pages long. Uh, it's impressive and great. What powers all of this, especially for open books or for open uh, educational resources? Yeah. Uh, Brian owns the copyright of all this, but he likes it in such a way to allow free reuse and distribution. Uh, so the, the beauty of all of this, so we talked about creating and adapting, but if we really whittle it down to just talking about the building blocks, let's say we're, we're wanting to adapt something, but we're utilizing these open licenses to take already existing content, pull it all together, and create something new. If this wasn't licensed in such a way, anybody who would ever want to go ahead and do anything with Brian's book would need to go ahead and talk to Brian because he owns copyright. And that puts burden on uh, whoever's writing it to, to manage these rights. By these open licenses, basically it means like as long as you get attribution to Brian, as long as it's not used to make a profit, and uh, as long as whatever you create on top of this or adding any additional content, it has to be shared in this very same license. Super simple. And all of a sudden, now this is a, a critical building block to build off new information. Maybe somebody else creates a brand new course from this, the student does a few alterations. All of a sudden, it's saving uh, students more money halfway around the world. Uh, and it's all contributing to a broader body of knowledge. Now, that, that's the open piece. For the alternative, Brian and Andy also mentioned, like utilizing fair use. There's going to be some tricky parts to this. This is why copyright is an important piece of this conversation, but we can help authors guide uh, work through these issues. Okay, did you want to, I saw you had the Edmund Ariel one off. Did you want to show that? No, quick? okay. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Here, I'll leave it with you. The Edmund Ariel has the feature of, it is available as Colby said, print on demand on Amazon. They're actually making money, even though it's available free from New Prairie Press. I think partly because if you're not one of the students in the class, there are not people interested in unmanned aerial systems these days, the way you find all books is through Amazon. So the students in the class get it free. If somebody wants to search, they can actually find it free. But they find that actually half their sales, I think, are, oh, Amazon gives us, you know, Amazon sells this, and they can make money. Amazon well, provide all service to their students. Amazon might come at like my if they ever knew that there was a free version out there, I'm not sure how like they might have policies to do this, but if they ever find out that well, I think they make money on print on demand from the actual print Yeah, from the print on demand. So there's a printing yeah. company for that. For sure. Yeah. I mean they're what what I've seen on these, and he's not the only one who's done it, I guess, is they're they're fairly I thought they were like seventeen dollars or something. Like yeah, that. right. Very, it's almost like a print on demand type price as I look at it. Exactly. So when you look at the, the price that they're charging for this, but. In my session later, I'm, I'm going to talk about Rebus, which is like an online open textbook community. And uh, Rebus, I know, is actually, they haven't announced it officially yet, uh, but they are working on developing their own print on demand service. And so they, they want to work with uh, with groups like, the, like CATS uh, to actually allow like university created books to be. Printed on demand. So, cool. So, other things within the applications we kind of went along the path down there talking about platforms is you know how can students access the resources? So that's something that's very important. Um, also, the accessibility things related to that, as Andy talked about. Uh, how do students engage with the learning process? So, we want the pedagogy to be kind of forefront of how you're thinking about this and not. Okay, this is a textbook I use. I'm just going to create a, a, a facsimile. If, if that fits exactly your pedagogical, you know, sort of thought process, then that might be a good. But this is a time where you really want you to be thinking about, hey, what what makes sense? You know, for me to best be able to educate my students in in this class. And so that's something we really would like to see you do. And what are your anticipated outcomes? And so that could be. Um, one of the things that students have told us is that they like these resources because they're customized. And so please think, you know, about how you can do that better. You know what I mean? The, the fit, how what you teach, what do you think they should know? And there's a lot of value they find from that beyond just it being free. You know, the fact that it's customized and it fits exactly what they're going to learn about in that course. Any 
anything else, or do you think we should start talking individually with people as far as the, I think the, the, the high points? <laughs> and you're welcome to reach out to us if you have questions specifically. So, David, I guess if we want to start with you, since you at least shared a little bit, do you have something in mind that you want to do yet? Are you still kind of learning? Do you still thinking at this point in time, or kind of what stage are you at, I guess, in considering this? Yeah, well, I've, I've followed the, the process through the years, but uh, I've also talked to people who say, wow, I started it and it was such a massive job keeping it updated constantly right. that they've gone back to the old textbook mm -hmm. route. Um, my, the course that I'm primarily looking at this uh, is taught online in the classroom, and so we probably have, oh, 400 students a year go through there with $150, $60 per textbook. That's a lot of money. Nice. Uh, but I just, with what all I do, I simply don't have time. You know, I've got 250 students with no TA. Right. Um, I just don't have the time to constantly be updating a textbook. So it's just been easier to tell them, you know, get an old edition of this and you get it for a buck on Amazon, uh, literally. And, uh, and but it's, it's just, it's driving nobody. It's engaging nobody. Right. And frankly, my teaching style is I don't, you know, I had a team out one time, a student said, I don't know why I bought the textbook, he didn't read it to us once. Um, <laughs> that's, um, that's just not my style, you know, I, I see myself as supplemental to right. the textbook. And, but it's, it's gotten to the point where the, the, the value of the textbook is so minimal for my students. I've just got to figure out something else. So I'm here today just to learn, you know, what's involved, how much work really is expected, uh, because I'd love to come up with something more creative. And I've been around long enough that I get to teach the classes that I love, and I'll be probably teaching them for a long time. Now, the two things that struck me when you were talking about things is you're saying you didn't want to create something, but then you have to keep it up to date. So you're telling your students to buy the old versions. I'm thinking, well, you not keep it up to date. They can just look at the old version. <laughs> <laughs> save the dollar on Amazon or something. Um, but that is part of what the fee is hopefully to do to say, yes, we do recognize. I've been using mine since 92. Mm -hmm. um, when it was something you had to go to the copy center and buy at five cents a page. Um, and I have rewritten it multiple times through there. But part of the idea is, okay, but there is some, an ongoing money coming in. Um, we have not really discussed whether you could get grants again and or how, what our renewal cycle will be to say, I've got this, but it needs updated. But we're gonna have to do that at some point. I think it's positive, so. <laughs> but, no. No, never discussed, no. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the fees for, so. But not all of us are done with that yet. <laughs> <laughs> You're approaching 30 on years on yours. They owe you at least one of them. <laughs> right. They owe me a first one. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and that is true. Neither Brian nor I have ever gotten a grant from this because we did it to create by it. <laughs> and, and the time you referenced, most of the award we provide would be for like summer salary mm -hmm. for you. You know what I mean to say that, hey David, we value you taking the time to do this. You know, we'll, we're gonna provide an award, you know, to support you mm -hmm. taking the time, you know, to work on this yeah. and things. And yeah. so when we say the award, don't think that you have to say, oh, I need to spend it on this and that. It could just be, you know, I, I'm taking on all, all this or almost all of this. You know what I mean? Just for my time. You know what I mean? That I would spend investing into creating this resource or adapting it or changing what I teach from an assessment standpoint or whatever that is to make it so that I can make this change. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, yeah. and then the other class that I teach, the conflict class, uh, the, probably the best textbook is is still just not how I teach the class, no. you know, and so it's, it's well, read this part of chapter two, but then not mm -hmm. And so I think it would be, yeah, and then there's just a lot of stuff that's not there, so right. that I have a reading extra things. And so I think it could be very well done to actually do two of these at some point. Right. And, and another thing that is there's some value to that I, I think not everybody thinks through is that 
when you do this, and if you make it openly available, you are kind of providing a platform of, you know, I'm David Thompson at Kansas State University, and, you know, look, you know what I mean, that, you know, this is how I teach this and things. And so I know a lot of us think about, we do that from the R1 institution from a research standpoint, but we can also do that from a teaching standpoint too, you know, when doing this and things. And so I think there's a, there's a tremendous ability and you do have a tremendous reputation, you know what I mean, as an instructor and things as well, where you would be able to, hopefully capture some of that. You know what I mean in how you fit your course and get your change. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so um, I teach I teach a couple classes right now. Um, I'm teaching general psychology and the books are more or less awful uh, just in general. Um, I found one that I liked but similar I had to just basically get an older version of it. Um, I got the new version for myself that way I had more like recent things but being able to provide them with something that has some of the recent studies and findings things like that would be really useful but I don't like the new books and they're so expensive uh, if you start having to pay 150 200 dollars for just like textbook um, it's not really worth it for them because um, I tend to teach what I want them to know most of the time also so um, but then I'm also looking into after so long of teaching in the department, I get to teach like specialized courses for like my own interests. Uh, so I'm looking into starting to do that hopefully in the next year. Um, and the specialized books on certain topics are very, very expensive also um, to the point where I just don't even want to consider them as an option. So being able to um, do something where I'm like adapting something older with the material that I want to teach, um, I think would be really useful. So. Yeah, it's still at a very sort of learning about it in the process phase. Can you talk about the the gen side class and the the process? You know what I mean on how they receive those sections or how how that's done or um yeah, so I'm section I'm section H of Gen Psych, so there are a ton of uh -huh. I think it goes to like L or something. There's a ton of sections. Um as a graduate student, I only have up to like 30 people in my class, but then the larger sections can have like 200 students. Um, so it really, they typically don't give the graduate students the larger sections of that, but then each of the individual sections are basically your own class. So I get to do what I want with it. Um, so there's a lot of freedom in that. Because, yeah, the reason I got, you know, like Gary Briggs has been I don't know if you've okay. seen or used his materials. We funded that. Okay. You know, I guess. And, okay. But we didn't, and we, we see that in all the sections, mm -hmm. and so we don't know exactly yeah. how to possibly engage, you know what I mean, Psycho psychological sciences yeah. and discussion about. I have an idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So that's the reason when you were here and described it, I was interested mm -hmm. you know what I mean, and hearing from your perspective on how yeah. that was kind of functioning, I guess, as a piece of work. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. It's still, it's still very, uh, like, he could teach a chapter that I don't even cover, so mm -hmm. it's still very, uh, we get to basically decide what we want to talk about. So, like, if I don't want to talk about therapy, then I don't have to talk about therapy, so. Um, but it's still something that he has. Because I knew that what uh, Mary Kane had done mm -hmm. something. I knew that. I didn't know that Gary had done uh, it something. Inside, yeah. yeah. And so, and we see some of the sections use it, but I don't know exactly how. You know, the, mm -hmm. the, some are choosing, some are not. And yeah. So what we're in is, you know, idea, I guess, but we would definitely be engaged. You know, we'd definitely be interested in if there's a um, interest or ability to make a change to something, even if it still allows you guys to have some flexibility. You know what I mean? Yeah. With it, what you want to teach, I yeah. guess, and things, and not have the reverse be something that would be in the sign. Yeah. And I, I don't know whether I ever say ask you what Gary, you know, has done either, if that's what you guys decide. You know what I mean? That, that you want, I guess, and things, but that's what we funded uh, three or four years ago. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I just took a look at some of the books available for psychology and mm -hmm. general psychology and yeah there should be some some good building material mm -hmm. even if you wanted to build something and so that, another thing we got talked about is using platforms some of the cool things you can do for a class especially like gen psych mm -hmm. is that 
they can pull in, you can like import the open textbook, and then you can start remixing. Like, I like okay. this, you know, you're like this chapter, you're like this chapter, you know what I mean? And okay. you just start pulling, you know what I mean? And you kind of build your own custom resource. And so, Robbie, that's kind of what they did for um, Biology 198 too. Okay. Uh, so that's what he's going to talk about at his session here a little bit later. He adapted was that that's kind of exactly the, the process they took. And now they're throwing a wrench in my keyboard. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but we have another platform that I think you yeah. might like. You yeah, know what I mean? That will announce, you know, hopefully on all in day or pretty soon where they they can import what you guys have. You know what I mean? And then my hope is that they can put, they can put the yeah. you, you, guys, you, guys, well, you guys have all your assessments too. I think you could together. You know what I mean? I guess potentially yeah. this new platform and things if you want. You know what I mean? You don't have to, but if you want, I guess of course. And so but yeah, the same type of thing that that's kind of what I described as kind of what Robbie did. You know what I mean, I guess, when they were reading your book. Because they use OpenStax, which is a a well known nonprofit organization that has created a number of these books, especially for high enrollment courses. Okay. And they license them like Ryan said, so people can basically take them and Remix and reused and revised. Like and tweaks carry with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so then you could put it in a platform and then you could just start remixing. I think Gary used Nova. Does that sound right? Uh, it was Nova or something like that, you know, as far as the name, what we imported okay. for. And it was a module type thing too, where right. you could mix, you know, as well. That seems specific for psychological sciences, right? Um, and we have had people that will use Canvas as their platform. Mm -hmm. um, particularly things that have a lot of curated readings. That's one of our things to say, I want you to read this article, I want you to read that article, those will be the launching points for our classroom discussion. And just set it up through Canvas. And maybe fill in some of their own pages or not so much to say, Canvas isn't what I would do if I were writing a book, but for a, I'm trying to stitch together a bunch of different pieces to make a class. Mm -hmm. uh, we have someone right now who's working on a proposal where they said, you know, the first half of the class is best explained by text and the second half is best explained by video. Mm -hmm. And he said, is that okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Content expert, if you think this is best done by text and that's best done by video, we well, tell Robbie, Robbie, this is what you, you know, we think you should do. Robbie knows, you know, biology. You know what I mean? I guess the things, and so we're interested. In what what's your vision? You know what I mean? And see, yeah. we can understand what your vision is, and you know how you, how you think this would best work. And, uh, yeah. and I'm not dismissing the higher ed courses that you're, mm -hmm. or the higher level courses you're talking about as well, because oftentimes hard to find a book that will fit. You know, I mean, those sorts of courses too. And so sometimes, especially the curated lists, you know, that he talked about, we've seen some, some people use as well. Yes, Joyce. Yeah, I do have a question. So I've used Canvas a lot and I've, you know, for articles and, mm -hmm. and videos and things like that. And it's, I think I, the thing I like about it is I can monitor how much time a student has spent reading the materials. So at the end of the day, I can see the investment of time they put in and you know, materials that they're not reading. Right. And, you know, it might not be, you might not find it relevant or it's not very user-friendly, then I can change that out. So I like that about Canvas. Mm -hmm. But I also, I've also looked at some open textbooks that are available online and I really like how they embed, it, it really looks like a textbook, so to speak. You know, they have the chapters and you can click on it. They have the activities and they click to the media and things like that. I really like that also. So, so the question is that, is there a specific software that you prefer us to use and perhaps we can have access to it so I can play around with it to compare that to Canvas to see which one is easier for me to use um, and to update. I think the main thing is keeping it updated. It needs to be something that, you know, user friendly in that sense. And then the second question is, so can I, how much, so there, so there, are op, there are open textbooks out there, and how much of those um, material can I adapt? Is there, you know, some of the materials are really good, and I, you know, can I adapt that? Is there a copyright with that? Okay, so good questions, Joyce. So thank you for those. So the, the first question that you had 
I, I think I would probably steer you towards understanding press books, you know, a little bit, I guess, and things. And then the other, I'll say the name now, even though it'll become official later, LibreText is the other platform that we are having that's going to come that um, is, we're very excited about having both Pressbooks and LibreText, you know, as options that people can use, you know what I mean, if they, they want to. And both of those um, resources, or both of those platforms, what's very cool about them is that you can import the, the book in, so you can say, this is the open textbook that I want, or in LibreText, they are actively harvesting all the open textbooks that are out there, and so they have them already in the platform, and so you can, just go and then to your second question, if it's an open textbook, the licensing is such that you can use however much you want. You know what I mean? And then you can uh -huh. revise it however you want. And as long as you provide attribution and things, you, you can tweak it, revise it, and make it your own. Look, I just have to modify okay. my, my spin on those two <laughs> uh, On the second one, it depends on what license the open textbook was put up by. Right. right. That's true. That's true. Yeah. License. Right. right. The license absolutely matters. So you'll have to take a look at that. Yeah. As I said, we've, we've got librarians and copyright experts and things who can help. Most things that are open, you really can't redo as Brian said, right. but you do need to double check the license. Mm. Uh, okay. But as I said, you know, if you're just saying, I don't know what to do, we've got a professional who can help you, you want to double check that for you, you know, you say, hey, am I allowed to read this? Yes. And you're not sure quite how to interpret the license or something, ask us, we'll, we'll sort it out for you. The other feature is that uh, in terms of what platform we recommend or we like, we are familiar with Pressbooks and it's worked well. Okay. We we look at LibreText and think it has a lot of features we like. So we think LibreText, you know, is going to look good for us. But we're not in the business of telling you, oh, this is what you should be using. As we mentioned, uh, Gary Brace in psychology used a different platform that worked better for him. Robbie Bear used OpenStax. Uh, and is looking to change, but uh, he's being pushed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can go different routes. I mean, I can right. go to Google Docs right. and go there. I can just go right into PDF and start modeling it in PDF. And so, it. so just, just so the, the, the OpenStax is kind of now since they're discontinuing their platforms. That's why Robbie right. is at the point where he's trying to figure out what he wants yeah. to do and move forward. So, so, so when we say Pressbooks and LibreText, we're not saying you have to choose those. We're not saying if you choose those, you'll get a leg up in the grant selection proposal. We're saying if you're not sure where to start, we think those are two good places to start. But if something else appeals to you and you say, hey, this is what will work better for what I want to do, that's fine. We'll really want to, so we, we will make comments. Uh, so there are some uh, folks who, who create their content on iBooks or other proprietary plat platforms where they're using like, non-standard sort of deal. Uh, that's great, I mean, that's fine. Uh, but if we do feel like there's a better alternative, we will serve you to something that's a little less uh, uh, proprietary. Because we do want to go ahead and maximize reuse, adaptability, and really survivability. If something's built on a proprietary platform, like that file may not exist. So this is, these are the things that we'll make comments on and suggestions if we have. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you very much. I, I found Pressbook and I've created an account, so I'm going to check it out. Thank yeah. you. So if, if you want, that's what Colby's demoing, if you're still available. I think it starts at 10.30, does that sound right? It's yours from 10 to 10.30? Yeah. This is, his, 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 so he's demoing Pressbooks, and so that, if you're okay. in Pressbooks, it'd be a, a very good option to be able to zoom in and see how he's utilized this as he's used it quite a bit and understands it. I, I don't know that much about best books myself. I've not used it. Colby knows, Colby's forgotten more about best books. You know, than I know, <laughs> you know I guess it is. so it's, it's that level of, but um, and everything, and everything Andy said was absolutely correct. I appreciate it. You know, he's correcting his <laughs>
Will there be are we going to be posting the the zooms of these? Because I've got to go teach in a few minutes. We will for the sessions upstairs. We are not since this one is so individualized. I don't think it makes sense to record this. You know, we'll talk specifically about your guys' resource. But if you want upstairs, yes, we are playing the record so that other people can watch if they are interested. And to yeah, I don't know when this is possible. Realistically, if a person is working on one of these, let's say I would get a grant accepted and would work on it fairly reasonably through the summer, I should be able to have it by fall, do you think? Or would that be more of a spring? Typically, we see, uh, it depends. You know what I mean? I guess I, I want to sure. caveat that. Um, it, it depends maybe on uh, how much you you have already available. You know what I mean? You kind of feed in or that you can adapt. But um, it's been not uncommon for people to work on it during the summer, and then more like what I said, roll, you know what I mean, and I'll get it to where they have draft, and then the fall is their rollout period, and you know what I mean, where it's like, it's not a complete resource, it's a, I am finalizing, you know what I mean, about a week ahead, you know what I mean, and then I'm rolling it out to students, and then they look at, okay, what, what worked well, what still needs to be revised more, you know what I mean, and then once they feel comfortable, then, because that's the other thing we talk about open. Sometimes open is very intimidating to people. Be like, oh, I don't know, you know what I mean? If I'm going to be comfortable, you know, putting my you know resource out there. But I, I think at some point in time, as you, you teach with it, you get more comfortable with you know. I, I feel like this is you know I'm comfortable with this moving out. I guess and things. And we have some people that said you know I started this process and I never intended you know what I mean for it to be open, but. Uh, you know, some of the people in my cats reached out and said, you know, hey, you have this resource, you've been using it, you know, even for a while, you know, you, you have some interest now and, you know, making this change. And I've been like, yeah, I kind of like that idea, you know, maybe at this point in time. And so uh, we're not going to be pushing you to say, hey, we need this open by this date. You know, what I mean, I guess it takes the first criterion is, are you helping, you know, K State students? But then the larger sort of, Goal or vision we would like, you know what I mean? You would be more ready, you know what I mean? The, the work with possibly moving out further. If, if you've done it through campus, it can't be restricted to K State students. Mm -hmm. Now, we believe in having more open resources because we use other people's yeah. open resources. Right. So that is a, if you're saying, I just want this to be available to K State students, well, that is a, well, are we sure we want to fund this? Right. Not, but we have. Right. You know, and, and for some things like I'm doing a curated reading list that is presented through Canvas, there's no, it's harder to see how do I make that open. And we have funded that in cases where that seemed the, the best way to handle things. So it, it would be feasible to propose at least to say, I want to do this and maybe use it with my students in the fall and have it be on Canvas and then maybe in the spring make it open. My, my impetus for that question is the union bookstore wants to know, like yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, okay. and that's been something that has been intimidating to in the past. You know, I've had to come back to some awardees and say, listen, you're not getting the back half of that award. You know what I mean? And tell, you know what I mean? You're going to tell the bookstore. You know what I mean? That, hey, I'm fully on. You know what I mean? With this, I guess, and things. And so that's been. They, they felt like that taking away their safety net for some for some faculty, but at some point in time, we're, we're going to need you. You know what I mean? To be ready. You know what I mean? To make that step. And I understand the stage you are now. It's intimidating, but um, you do you do have quite a bit. Of, you know, there's still a decent amount of lead time. You know, for you to think through and kind of work through this. And I, you know, knowing you, David, I have a lot of confidence. You know what I mean? I think that you would be able to successfully do this and things if it's something you feel like you want. And one thing there, just touched it. <laughs> uh, right now, the sense is, okay, the bookstore asks, what book do I pick? That's the question. And I know when Don Saucy does the sessions for the graduate students in psychology, that one of the things he wants to talk about is, how do you pick a book? And I don't want that to be the question. The question should be, what material should I be providing to my students so they can learn? Mm -hmm. And that's part of the open alternative, is I don't want to just say, oh, this is the book, or maybe the book's online or something. What materials do you need to provide your students so they can learn, should be the question. 
Now, the bookstore has an obvious interest in that being a book. Right. Um, <laughs> but I don't think we have an interest in it being a book. We have an interest in the student's learning. And I'd like to move toward that approach. Makes sense. And so my take on all this, and this is what I'm hearing from students, is when I was in school, you got the textbook, you're going to keep that damn thing for your life mm -hmm. because that became your resource. Mm -hmm. This is their resource now. Yeah. And what you need is exactly what they need for that class at that time. And so that's the next iteration we need to do. Yeah. And my textbook is every week is stripping out all that extra information mm -hmm. that is reference information that they might need in a verbal class. They're, they're not going to think about principles again. Those are for classes. They're going to Google right. if they need that. Yeah. And so that's our next step is to take ours is 900 some odd pages. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is scary. <laughs> but it, it, was, it, was, it was open resources, adaptable. So a bunch of other people wrote stuff. We just pulled it all together and said, we don't need this section, that section. This is where we do it in. And we just compiled it all together. And you know now it's time to prune it down to the, the, that, the that is, that, that's that's a hard stuff to get to because I I would come back sometimes to teaching my class and be like why am I teaching about this I'd be like there's no one making me teach this anymore you know what I mean and so I'd be like yeah, this is something I should get rid of you know what I mean and so was, every time I come back I look and say what idiot wrote this <laughs> <laughs> so, but one of the features of having it on here. Uh, the, the calculus textbooks, 900 pages would be short. Uh, I mean, they're, they're massive. And we discovered none of the students, the students would buy them and leave them on their desk. And the teachers would be given them and would leave them on their desk because no one wants to carry a 1,200 page book around with them. So the book had no presence during instruction. No one had the book. But everyone has these, right. and students will show up at the help room or something, and sit down working on things and be looking at their book, you know, in the middle of the day or something, because they have their book with them once it looks like this, and that uh, gives them opportunities for study. Yeah, 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 we, yeah, we need, yeah, we need to end so we can get up to rocky yeah. sessions. But quickly, the one funny thing I do add up in this point is when we did student surveys, one of the funny comments came back on what they liked about just no heavy backpacks. <laughs> <laughs> <It's really sad>. <laughs> <laughs> so, but thank you all for coming in and learning more about the initiative, the Textbooks 2.0. Uh, we're happy to follow up, you know what I mean, and talk to each of you if you have interest in things about continuing forward. Yes. Uh, one quick thing to David, uh, <laughs> I do remember the first time I'm walking out lecture and students said, I have a question about what we 